sitting here with Mickey D. I guess I don't have to explain who he is and that he's playing with Motorhead and who Motorhead are. Hi, Mickey. How are you doing? Oh, pretty tired, but good. It's after the show. I just took a shower and uh, here we are. Yeah, he was so kind to give us this interview after the show. Could you do me a favor and pronounce your real name once for me? Uh, Del Audio. Del Audio. But when I was younger, they called me the D or... You know, usually D. They couldn't say Del Audio. It's, it's Greek, so... Yeah, that's why I asked. Uh, Did you still speak Greek? Did no, you I, I never have. I understand more than I, mm -hmm. than I can speak. But, you know, I grew up... I'm born and raised in Sweden. My father moved there in 59, and I'm born in 63. So we spoke okay. fluent Swedish in, at home. So, But uh, I wish I learned it. Eventually, maybe I will, you know. When you're done with all this, I guess. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I get some more time. So you've been on tour. You come to Germany like every November, December to do a tour. This time you have Antrax with you. How's the tour going? Really good. I mean, this whole tour is uh, pretty much sold out. You know, mm -hmm. it's um, it's great to have Antrax. I mean, they, they toured with us 2007, I think. Mm -hmm. They did a European tour with us, and uh, we toured a lot with them. Now. I mean, they were on the Mayhem tour. And so, you know, we're good friends, and that, they're such a solid, great band, so, you know, they go hand in hand with us, so, it's, it's excellent. And I'm glad that it's selling out, you know, it's yeah. obviously a good deal, so. That's a good thing, yeah, yeah, people were really looking forward to that. You guys just published The World Is Ours, Volume 2, Any Place Crazy as anywhere else. Tell us something about it. It's a live album. <laughs> <laughs> so you didn't know. <laughs> no, it's, 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 uh... When we did part one, we already had part two uh, planned. We knew we were going to do a second deal of this, and uh, and here it is. It's we just wanted to take our fans on a little trip around the world, you know, with with more than one show from one place. And, and, uh, and now I'm going to take a big Swedish tobacco because I'm dying for one. Snus, you know, you don't have that here. Right? No, we don't. But some friends made us try it. Yeah, like it. It's pretty good. <laughs> you also had a new book out, Live to Win by Alan Burridge. Yeah. Somebody said, finally the book the band deserves. Were you part of the process or uh, did you just read it or didn't you do anything at all? No, 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 no. Yes and no. I mean, uh, Alan, these guys are running our fan club. So, mm -hmm. I mean, who else can do better than, than, than they? They know what's going on. They know the deal. They know the the real story behind Motorhead or during the Motorhead touring. I mean, you have a lot of people that speculate and, and make up shit and try to put pieces together that they really don't know mm -hmm. what they're talking about. But these guys do. So, yes, it's, it's cool. I, I still haven't read the whole thing. I, I started, and uh, I don't know why I got interrupted, actually, but I left the book at home, so... I'll, I'll go over it now when I get home. Okay. I pretty much know what it says, but you know, I'd like to read it with my own eyes. Well, you've had your 20 year anniversary with Motorhead, I guess, this year, I think. I yeah, it's actually 21. Is it? It's, it's official this year, yeah. Okay. So you it's, know what's going on with Motorhead, yeah, what has been going on. I'm still the new guy, you know. Are you? <laughs> I'm the new guy. <laughs> Were there, was there ever a point where you actually thought about quitting, all of you? No, there's never been ever talks about that because, I mean, why? I mean, it's like eating and drinking, you know? It's like, uh, I have to, we have to play, you know? Mm -hmm. As long as you physically and mentally, and what I mean by mentally, yeah, obviously you, you got to be able to tour, but mentally more that you enjoy it, you know? And, and you can still create good music, uh, then it's fun, you know, when you can deliver. Mm -hmm. And physically, you know, I'm sitting here with my five fingers on each hand and two arms and two legs, and, and I can still play drums, you know, and, and manage to do this. And thing. you do it in a wild, wild way. Yeah, I hit pretty hard and, and play pretty heavy, so I can tell you one thing, though, we will never be a band where people go... Oh, Motorhead, oh yeah, they used to be great, mm -hmm. you know. We quit a long time before that moment, so 
But we still kick an ass out there. I think we still play really well. We do great albums and audience seem to enjoy it. So we have something there, you know. And we enjoy it. Do you think Motorhead would work without Lenny or with another singer? No, no, of course not. <laughs> I had to ask that. <laughs> no, no, he wouldn't. We are uh, three individual uh, individuals in this band equal power, equal say, equal writing, equal everything. But bottom line is, of course, Lemmy's the founder and, mm -hmm. and the icon of this band, and he's the forefigure for this band, you know, so... No, he wouldn't go without his vocal and bass, no way, not at all, you know. You could do a stupid uh, cover version of it, but no. No, we wouldn't continue. It wouldn't be the same. No. There seem to be so many, almost all of them, um, musicians out there who are tattooed. All I can see on you is this one. Yeah, I only have this one. Why? Was it too painful or was it just not of your interest? I think it looks great on other people, but mm -hmm. I never liked it on myself. Okay. For some reason. But I'm, I'm starting to change a little bit there. But when I kind of grew up, I always thought it looked badass and good on other people. But I, I really wasn't into it on myself for some reason. Why, I have no idea. And it'll change over the years, I'm sure. You know? Just a feeling, I guess. You've been born in Sweden, as you uh, said. You're maybe that's why. <laughs> maybe that's why. Um, your ancestors are Greek. You've traveled the world so many times. You've been to different countries. You lived in different countries. Where do you feel at home? In Sweden. In Sweden? Oh, yeah. Still? Oh, yeah. I live in Gothenburg, Sweden. And uh, I've done that last 16 years now. I did spend 11 years in California and a few in Copenhagen with King Diamond and, you know, moved around and was in London for a while. And, but uh, no, Sweden is, is my home, you know, and uh, that's uh, Belong, I guess. Mm -hmm. I don't mind living in different places, parts of the world, but uh, when I, you know, I wanted my boys, my two sons to grow up and go through school and be raised in Sweden. At least for the first part of their life, you know, it's a certain security and cleanness and safety that somehow they, you wish your kids, of course. Um, and uh, I think that was a, a good move, you know. And uh, now they can start raising hell on their own. <laughs> <laughs> But at least they have a good foundation to stand on, mm -hmm. you know.